Last time. Maybe, but what about common decency? Nobody wants to have to look at a chick who looks like a half-naked horizon. He's trying to die, I think. Ugh. I'm going to kill you. Hello, friends and meisters. Welcome back to more. Nang, nang, nang. Last we left off, we were just proceeding through door one. And before that, Zero kind of made spaghetti out of someone's insides again. <sighs> the door opened. They stumbled into the room. Frantically, Junpei scanned the room. His eyes stopped on the device that would determine whether they lived or died. There it is! Over there! Next to the door they'd come through was the dead. As one, they ran to it. They put their hands over it as if they were fighting for it. Fighting for their lives, that is. Whew. That's out of the way now. It stopped. Yes, it did. Junpei could feel his heart pounding against the inside of his ribs. Ace and Clover were breathing hard and fast. It was the third time they'd been through the process, and they had yet to grow accustomed to it. Not that Junpei wanted to. He planned to finish the game before he got a chance to let eminent death become commonplace. Junpei looked around again, this time more slowly. There was another door, different from the one they'd entered through. He took hold of the knob and easily, gently pulled it open. It's not locked? That's a first. So, this is the wheelhouse. He closed the door again and turned to Ace and Clover. He fixed each in turn with a meaningful stare, then spoke. Ace, you investigated the wheelhouse next door. Very well. Clover, you're in charge of this room. Say something. Okay, I will. All right, then. Let's get started. We can do this. We have to find a way out. Well, that's a lot of places to look through. Goody. Seek a way out. A chair. A chair. Clover isn't talking much. Well, I guess that's understandable. I mean, she's been through a lot. Really, it's more surprising that she's still together enough to talk at all. You said it, Junpei. Oh, not a cool chart. Or charts. More than one, okay. I think this is a nautical chart. There's this line on it here. I think the line is the route the ship is supposed to take. There are these dots all over the map. Oh, those are probably ports, like, for a boat to stop at. It looks like the lines connect the tots. Oh, oh good old nautical charts. There's nothing left in the drawer. A light. It looks kind of like a wilted flower. That it does, Junpei, that it does. Very astute of you. A world map with the ancient ocean, or Atlantic Ocean in the center. There are a number of red pins in several locations. What do these red pins mean? Well, the nautical charts I picked up earlier have a map like this one. Maybe one of them matches up to the pins or something. Let's see. Well, what do you know? Looks like this one matches to the pins. Okay, so we've got seven locations, locations connected by straight lines. And each one has a word next to it. That's probably the speed. New material has been added to the file section. Mm, why, thank you. That's not what I wanted to find. Hmm. Oh, we're out of items again. There it is, the nautical table. That's what I was looking for. Full, half, slow, full, half, dead, stop. Well, it's directions. Full ahead, and you go half, and you go slow, and you go full, half, dead, and stop. Okay. Oh, there's a little compass there, too. Alrighty. 
What's this? A shelter lined with books. Let's see. What's in the blue one? There's something written on it. Ship's log. Huh? Ship's log? Huh. New material has been added to the file screen. Thank you. It's a one box. Maybe a case for letters? Hey, Clover, you ever write letters? Nothing. It's a light. Well, I guess she doesn't really feel like talking. She's not really paying attention to anything, is she? Her mind must be somewhere else. <laughs> well, you know your brother dying in front of you. Her being dead is a terrible thing to witness. A ah, pocket watch. That's a pocket watch! She sure hasn't been saying much, and she just keeps looking at the floor. She seems kind of sad. <laughs> Should be. No, you're so clueless. A voice he hadn't expected startled Junpei from his examination of the pocket watch. Oh, a pocket watch. Why'd you take a look at it? He spun around to find Ace standing in the doorway. Junpei shrugged and handed him the pocket watch. Hey man, what are you doing over in this room? Oh, I just thought I'd come check up on the two of you. Is there a problem? Well, I guess it's not really a problem, but... Uh, anyways, yeah. No, I guess not. It's good to be worried about us. It was a lie. All Junpei wanted to do was get rid of Ace. He'd sent Ace to the wheelhouse at the beginning for a reason. There was something he meant to ask Clover, and he meant to ask her in private. There was something he wanted to ask Clover, and he didn't want anyone else to hear him ask it. He also knew that Clover would likely remain silent if there were anyone else around when he asked. That's why he was so desperate to send Ace back to the wheelhouse. Ace opened his mouth and took an another look at Junpei and shut it again. A small smirk appeared on his face. Oh, I see, of course. He looked Junpei over, then glanced at Clover. I apologize for the intrusion. Well, best of luck. <laughs> that guy, I tell you. Ace gave Junpei a knowing pat on the shoulder and left. <sighs> Junpei let out a sigh and brushed a few drops of sweat from his forehead. He turned and found himself looking straight into Clover's eyes. She'd heard what Ace had said. She regarded Junpei with caution. What was that about? She was clearly suspicious and with good reason. Junpei's eyes widened and he held up his hands in a gesture of innocence. No, 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 it's not like that. What's it like then? I just wanted to hear the rest of that story. I didn't get a chance to ask you about it until now. What story? About the experiment. Remember the one you started to tell me in the operating room? You said something about an experiment that happened here nine years ago. Clover bit her lip. She stared down at the floor for several long moments. When she spoke, it was barely audible. I'm sorry, but I don't want to talk about that right now. I'm just not in the mood, okay? You understand, right? I just keep thinking about my brother. But I can't stop. I mean, who would, who would do something like that to my brother? I can't forgive them. I'm not going to let this, them get away with it. They're going to pay for it, I promise. So, so... Her shoulders were shaking. Drops of blood had sprung up on her lip where she was biting them. She wiped it off and looked at Junpei, her eyes fierce and angry. Junpei! Who do you think did it? Her voice was cold and scarcely above a whisper. Junpei gulped. Well, if what Seven said was right, then there would have to be at least two of them. You need at least three people to open the number doors. If you subtract Snake, that means there were at least two other people. You're right. So what does that mean? Well, if we just look at the bracelet numbers, we should be able to figure it out. Who would have opened door three with Snake? Well, really, who and who, or who, who, and who? I mean, it could have been four people? Well, technically, it's possible. Uh, I don't know. That doesn't seem very likely. Why? Um, I'll tell you later. Why don't we just assume it was only two other people for now? Oh, okay, got it. Let's do that, then. And who do you think it could be? Junpei crossed his arms and thought. Snake's bracelet number was two. With two bracelet numbers added to two, what would give a digital root of three? Mm, that's a good question. I'm 
Mm, 2 plus 3 plus 7 is 12, and then it's 1 plus 2, that'd be 3. For what that be? Santa and Snake? No, Sa Santa and 7. Santa and 7, that's it. That makes sense. Would it be Santa and 7? 2 plus 3 plus 7 equals 12. 1 plus 2 equals 3. Yes. 3. Could, could it be? Were Santa and 7 the killers? What's wrong? I don't want to think Seven's a killer. Seven's too badass. Clover looked back at Junpei and looked back. he looked back at her. There was no point in hiding it. He told her his conclusions. That's what I thought. She looked less surprised than he'd expected. Santa and Seven. If there were two people, then that's the only combination that works. Hey, wait a minute there. Don't you think it's a little too early to be jumping to conclusions? Well, all I said that those two people would have been able to open door three with your brother. There might be other possibilities. Well, what are the possibilities? Uh, um... Uh, he didn't have an answer. He was ready to admit defeat when Clover spoke. Are you saying you think it was three or four people? I really don't think that's likely. Why, though? Can I borrow your pen and paper? Clover put her hand out expectingly. Junpei pulled out his pen and pad of paper and handed them to her. She opened the notebook and wrote down several simple addition problems. Oh, I see what she's doing. Eventually, she had eight, which provided a digital root of three. A is two plus one plus three plus six equals 12. One plus four plus five equals, or with a two equals 12. Two plus four plus seven plus eight equals 21. 21 again, 21 again, and 21 again. Well, it's 21 again and then 21 again. What's this? These are the combinations for three or four people. These eight combinations are the only possible ones. I see. Jinpei? Yeah? I can trust you, right? Uh, of course, I won't stab you in the back with a rusty knife, promise. Why would you need to ask that? Really? Yeah. Then I should get rid of B, D, G, and H, right? Of course. Let's cross them out. And you should take off yours too. The ones with four. So what does that leave? A and E. Mmm, I don't like that one bit. That's right. It could be Snake. Could be or Snake Santa June. Seven Santa Snake. I don't like that. I want to believe it's either of them. 2 plus 1 plus 3 plus 6 equals 12, and then 1 plus 3 plus 7 plus 8 with the 2 equals 21. Wait! It can't be A! Why not? Because June's in that one. There's no way in hell that she do something like that. My thoughts echoed. Are you sure? I'll bet my life on it. I don't know how Jinpei can be so sure of this. Okay then! I can cross off A too, right? Yeah. Well, what have we got left? E. Which is Santa and Seven, and I don't believe that Seven would do something like that. He's too good of a man, I tell you. Do you know what this means? Everyone besides me, you, and June would be working together. Do you think that's likely? Hmm. If there were four people working together, they wouldn't be very cautious. I don't think they try that hard to hide what they were doing if they were numbered. That's right. Well, you do have a point, actually. And besides, if Seven and Ace and Seven are working together, they could have easily gotten rid of me when I went to the shower room with them. But they didn't. They didn't even try anything. If they were the killers, why wouldn't they? Also a good point. Her voice was calm, but Jinpei had only to look in her eye to know it was a forced calm. There were tears forming at the corners of her eyes, and she was blinking fiercely to keep them back. Perhaps by attempting an objective analysis of who might have killed her brother, she had been able to distance herself from the harsh reality of his death. The more she struggled to act unconcerned, the more Junpei felt his heart tighten. Okay. Yeah, well, that does make sense. It seems pretty unlikely that as many as three or four people... Yeah! And that means there's a good chance it was Santa and Seven. That's how it looks! But why would they do it? There's a moment of silence. I think I know. What is it? What's the reason? 
He laid his hand gently on her shoulder. He was close, so close to the answer. When Ace chose the worst possible moment to return. She raised a knowing eyebrow, then spoke. Have I interrupted something? What do you want? There was something I wanted to speak with you about, Junpei. Could you come with me? For a moment. She turned off or turned on his heel and walked back towards the wheelhouse. Junpei looked over at Clover. He gave her a shor short nod and hoped that she would be willing to talk to him again later and followed Ace. Well, as long as you're still alive later. What did you want to talk about? Ace looked at Junpei and smiled, perhaps more of a smirk than a smile. There was something I wanted to check. Yeah, what's that? If you'll excuse me. With no warning, Ace slipped his hand into the pocket of Junpei's vest. Uh, hey! What the hell are you doing? He reached for Ace's arm. But it was already too late. In the older man's hand were the pieces of paper Junpei had balled up and hidden in his pocket. Just as I thought. <laughs> we got found out. This guy is too perceptive. You switched them, didn't you? When we voted. Ah, oh, well, I can't say that I care. I managed to get through the numbered door I wanted, despite your mischief. Wait, why did you... when? Oh, simple curiosity. I hope you won't think ill of me for it. Ace smiled, gave Junpei a friendly pat on the shoulder, then turned on his heel and left. <laughs> it was a small defeat, but it was a defeat. Junpei had lost the upper hand, and he knew it. He could feel his st stomach begin to tense. <sighs> this isn't good. So many drawers, but nothing inside of them. Desk, there's nothing in the drawers. Or at least from what Ace says. A compass. It appears to be broken, however. You see the glass cover has been smashed to pieces. The helm. Well, steering wheel might be more appropriate term. What is this? Some kind of display? It looks a little like an electronic scoreboard. I imagine it was added recently. Uh, I don't like that. A desk. Anything in the drawers? Nope. There's another room on the other side of this window. Wait, what? Is there two steering wheels? A compass! And what destiny does it point us to? I really hope you don't think that sounded cool. Uh, maybe. An engine order telegraph. They use this on old ships to adjust the speeds of the ship. Like these gear shift in a car? Well, it's a little different. This device doesn't connect directly to the engine. In short, it's a transmitter. The navigation officer uses it to set the speed of the ship and sends a signal to the engine. There's a handle on top of it which can be moved back and forth to. Hold on. Huh? There's no handle. You're right, there isn't. It looks as though it was deliberately removed. A compass? The needle is pointing north. Well, it's a steering wheel. A steering wheel. Let's see if it... Wow! Oh, it looks like the steering wheel moves. So it would seem. I noticed something else as well. What's that? Well, when you move this wheel, the compass also moves. What do you mean? The ship, it's moving. Ah, tricked you, didn't I? The wheel and the compass must be connected to one another somehow. Hmm. Do you think that's important? Well, let's try turning it again. Well, I think it's a little important. They actually have something that might help us out with this. But I'd like to finish exploring a bit more. Ah, a human hammer. They're often used to subdue large men like Seven. <laughs> what? That was a joke, of course. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Ace, you really kind of suck at making jokes. Uh, that was a rather cruel thing to say, Junpei. I can't believe you said that. Hmm. I want to take a little look at that file screen here. Oh. 
Okay, I think I have an idea. A compass, yeah, yeah, we know about the compass, Junpei. Steering wheel, steering wheel. If we move it, the direction changes. I swear I saw something that had directions on it. Maybe if I enter the directions in that order. Well, we did see something that had directions on it. That's why I was reviewing that map once again, just to refresh my memory. To jog it, if you will. So we will try going so first. Oh, no, crap. Nothing is happening. Junpei, this is almost certainly one of Zero's puzzle. Yes, I I'll help you solve Have you found everything? Perhaps something with the points of compass on it. No, oh, yeah, I'm good. I, I see it. Don't worry, I know. Eh, let's try it again. I don't know why I backed out there for a second. Uh, stop! That did not stop where I wanted it to. That's weird. Why isn't anything happening? Junpei, you aren't hiding anything, are you? You already found something with the directions on it. Something with directions? Does he mean something with the compass points on it? That's what he means, and maybe it would show the order I'm supposed to enter this stuff in. Well, it does. I at least believe it does, but I just keep stopping at the wrong place. Let's try that again. Okay, south. That's what I want to try. And I'm going to try west. West it is. Southwest. Northwest. East? Yeah, east. Let's try east. And then north. We'll stop on north. Hopefully that's the puzzle. Did we get it? What the? The handle came off. Ha! <laughs> Stooping so low are you, Zero? You know what? I actually think that might be the handle we're missing from this thing. Let's try it. So, I am sure hope this handle fits. Yes, it fits! Excellent! That should allow us to operate the engine order telegraph. Let's give it a shot. Hmm. God, I'm trying to remember what that stupid telegraph said. I think it was full to start with. Oh, no. I screwed up. Hmm. Nothing's happening. No, I don't think so. Take a look. Over there, above the door to the chart room. Okay. There's something on the wall that looks kind of like an arrival board. There's only stuff displayed on the left side. What the hell is this? It's the name of the ports in the world. I imagine it's showing us a ship's route. You know, just like the ones you might see at an airport. Deporting XX carrier at X flight at X time. Like that. Oh, I get it. It does look like one of those are, are the names of all the ports along the ship's route. There's only one line that shows the arrival time. Oh, the time on the bottom, right? 47 seconds and 25 minutes past 7 o'clock. Perhaps that's arrival time. Hmm. Why would they specify seconds? Alrighty. In we go. Let's try this once more. We want full. Then if memory service correct, it was half in that order. Followed by slow. Followed by full again. Full speed ahead, the all. Half. Got a half speed at some times. Dead slow. And then stop. Did we get that right? Huh? That's weird. I thought I put in the right speed. Did I mess up? No, I don't think so. The same thing happened earlier, remember? There's been a change to the arrival board. Yeah, you're right. Let's check it out. Okay, hopefully that's what we needed. Let's leave with what the nautical chart said. The display's changed. Now it's showing an estimated time of arrival of 10 seconds past 3 o'clock. The time, time. Hmm. Still the pocket watch? We do. Okay, let's try this again. 
Junpei, take a look. The display panel looks different. Yeah, you're right. On the left side of the ha it is it on? The last line says that the estimated arrival of time at the final destination is 10 seconds past 3 o'clock. Huh. Why do they have seconds in there? It's a little too specific. There's got to be a reason for that. Hmm. Oh, perhaps. Well, what's he doing? Excuse me, Junpei. I'm going to go for your pockets again. I swear. He took my pocket watch. Hey! What the hell are you doing? Just trust me. Now, is it a lined up? It should be fine now. Well, thanks for giving me the pocket watch back, but you don't need to look so smug about it. Let's see what he... Oh, he moved the hands. Ten seconds past three o'clock. Oh, so you changed it to match the final destination arrival time. Ace nodded slowly. You know what to do next, right? Well, yeah, we can see it right behind his skull, actually. There's literally a door with an imprint of a damn pocket watch. That should be obvious enough. It looks like it's some sort of lock. It's got a weird shape and dentation on it. Actually, it's shaped just like the pocket watch I've got. Let's try putting this in there. Yes, it says open now. Good work. It seems we were successful. Well done, Junpei. Hey! Clover! What? Look, we unlocked the door. Now we can get out of this room. Oh! Well, let's get going then. Clover. Oh. I still, still feel kind of bad for Clover. You found it. The space they found themselves in outside of the wheelhouse was far too narrow to be called a hallway. On their left was a wooden door. Junpei pushed it open and stepped into the room beyond. It was full of all manner of turn-of-the-century electronic equipment. Most of them were things they'd never seen before. They had no idea what they might have been for, let alone how to operate them. And that these two kind of look like they're a face. <laughs> One smaller machine had a metal bar that ended in a circular handle. Ace seemed to recognize it. Ah yes, a telegraph key. These were used to transmit Morse code a long time ago. He turned and slowly took into the room, or took in the room. This must be the communication office. Across the room from the door they'd entered through was another door. Oh, surprise, surprise. A metal plaque was nailed to it. It read, Captain's Quarters. The Captain's Quarters? That's what it says. Then, do you think? I am Zero, the captain of the ship. Ace swallowed. Junpei could feel his hands begin to sweat. Only Clover seemed unaffected. Well, we won't know if we don't open it. She walked up to the door and put her hand on the knob. Okay, it's, it's not electrified like in sh Saw. Zzz, then she dies. That would have been terrible. It opened easily and without so much as a paw, she walked in. Junpei and Ace followed. The first thing they saw was a dead guy. A man on the floor covered in blood. <laughs> what a thing to walk into. Junpei felt his body seize up. His mouth went dry and it felt very, very cold. The body, or the blood in his veins slowed to a crawl and his heart tightened like a fist and pounded like a jackhammer. This was the third time he'd seen the horror of death laid out before him. He didn't think it was something he could stand to see much more of. Still, he had began to accept that whatever it was that he saw, whatever happened to him was beyond his control, and whatever force controlled him was driven by a determination that he could not hope to match. It's called the want to live. A sense of helplessness, of desperation washed over him. He left behind a feeling of utter emptiness that wormed his way through its body like acid. Then he realized they had yet to check the man's pulse. Perhaps he was still alive. A last ditch effort, fueled by that spark of hope, Junpei ran to the man's body, and his heart fell. Right into despair. His fingers on, er, on the man's neck felt no pulse. His pupil, pupils has dilated, and 
he wasn't breathing. Junpei lifted the man's already stiff body. There was a deep red wound on his chest. Junpei did not have to wonder long at what could have made such a wound. Oh god, it's an axe. For lying next to the corpse was an axe. The entire blade of it was drenched in bright red blood. From the shape of the man's wound, there could be no doubt that it had been made by the axe. Junpei looked at the body again. A lake of blood stretched out around it. it was wearing the clothes or er, clothes of a ship's captain, and all there were stained in blood. A captain. Did that mean that this man was zero? On his left hand was a bracelet. The number of the bracelet was zero. It was only then that Junpei noticed the stench of blood that filled the room. Huh. <sighs> he couldn't help but laugh. There was nothing else for him to say. It was too simple, too obvious, too straightforward. If there hadn't been a dead man on the floor, Junpei might have thought it was a joke. I could very well see why he might. Seek a way out again. One mystery to another. A dead man. Zero, the captain's quarters. We may indeed have to continue this next time. A nine, nine, nine.